Hi, welcome to DB Sync integration for Salesforce and databases, an ETL tool that will enable you to easily replicate, integrate, migrate, and bi-directionally synchronize data with the back-end databases of your choice, such as Oracle Database, SQL Server, MySQL, Amazon Redshift, PostgreSQL, and more. In the next few minutes, we will show you how to integrate Salesforce standard object with MySQL database. Now we're going to insert in our database a list of contacts existing in our Salesforce account, and at the same time, we will update on Salesforce the DB Sync unique field with the status success to identify which contacts have been already inserted on our database. When the triggers and rules are properly set, DB Sync will be ready to start synchronizing information between your applications. A trigger is like a reader you want to query the source, and a rule is a mix of writer and mapping section. This way you can create an existing table and map it to a standard object in Salesforce. We'll take a deeper look at mapping later on in this video. Once the integration runs, DB Sync will look into Salesforce for any contact that hasn't been included yet in the database and will proceed to insert it. After that, the process will update the DB Sync unique field with the word success to identify that this contact has been successfully inserted. With DB Sync, you can also update or upsert in your database a specific record from Salesforce. Just adjust the query accordingly, including any conditions and logic you need. Let's take a look at how this works. You can modify multiple records or just the one you need. For example, the name of the Salesforce account. Once the process has been executed, DB Sync will only modify the records that fulfill the conditions on the query. In this particular case, only the name of this account has been updated in your database. To get your apps talking to each other, sign into your DB Sync account and verify that your connectors are successfully validated. This way, you can make sure that the data will flow both ways between Salesforce and your database. To get started, you can create a new project or you can just import an existing one. Creating a new project is as simple as clicking on the project section, then click on create new project and enter your project's name. The next step is to create a process. Here you will be able to set all the workflows in which you include all the triggers and rules that you require according to your project's needs. Click on the create new workflow button and type the connector's name. Then on the edit section, you can configure the triggers and the rules for this particular workflow. In this video, we will be using an existing project in which we have already set a workflow which connects our Salesforce account to an existing table in our database. To insert records on the database, we've previously set the trigger selecting Salesforce as the data source and account as target object. Once you query the account, you need to select the writer. In this case, we selected MySQL. Then we select Insert as the operation we want to perform. And finally, we select DB account as the database table we want to integrate. After selecting the table, we can see what mapping we have to do. Here we can map the fields using the auto match option, or we can also do a manual mapping. This way, we'll be able to keep and use the same data structure of our database table. To update the success message on our Salesforce, we just need to set our update source section by selecting the corresponding options. For this exercise, Salesforce, Upsert, and DB account are the options for the operation we want to perform. Then in the mapping section, we can write a status to the DB unique field in Salesforce and do the respective matching with the ID number in Salesforce, establishing that we're going to match this particular record and update its status. Now that we have configured our process, the only thing left to do is to run the integration. We can run the sync either manually or automatically through the scheduler option by setting the platform to execute the integration on weekly, daily, or even a minute basis. Today we're going to run the sync manually just by clicking on the Run Now button. Once the integration runs, we'll just need to refresh our database to see how all the records are successfully inserted in our table. And at the same time, you will see how the success message appears on the DB unique field. To upsert a record on the database, it's necessary to edit the trigger and rules on the workflow. First, make sure you select Upsert in the Rules section, and then go to the Query Builder to include any logic and conditions you need. 
Since we don't want the process to sync all the records, but just the ones that have been recently modified, we use a simple logic where last modified date is greater than last success run. Then, in the Salesforce account detail, we proceed to edit and save the field we want to modify. And since we have set the right logic of the trigger, we can make sure that we only query the records that have been edited or inserted, as we just did the account name into Salesforce. With DB Sync integration for Salesforce and MySQL, you will be able to obtain a wide capability with databases, such as Oracle Database, SQL Server, MySQL, Amazon Redshift, and more. Construct your integration process between Salesforce and your database according to your business model and processes. Migrate and export data from Salesforce into a central data warehouse for consolidated reporting, and easily integrate e-commerce applications. To learn more about DB Sync integrations, enter now at www.mydbsync.com.